Hello, welcome. My name is Katie and I'm really glad to have you here because today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite one and done eyeshadows, which is kind of how I like to wear most eyeshadow. So I'm really excited to talk about this. So what I've got here today are my top 10 one and dones, uh, at least at the moment. But if this is interesting, just let me know if you want to see some more of my favorites because most of the shadows I wear, I wear as one and dones anyway. Uh, and that's because, and I'll also tell you like what I think of a good one and done when I think of it, uh, at least for me. So we are all on the same page about what exactly goes in to a one and done shadow in this in this space. <laughs> um, so I have pretty deep set eyes. They're like way back into my skull. Uh, and what that means for me, at least I think, uh, is that one, not a lot of lid space. Um, there, there's stuff covering my lid. It only, only becomes more as I move forward in time. And that's okay. Because every every year added is a blessing. Um, but uh, it means a lot of space up here, not a lot of space here, and already kind of like just a lot of depth uh, in my eye area anyway and if I'm adding in additional structure to my eye area like by darkening the crease or darkening the outer corner it can get carried away in my for me in my tastes really easily I don't like a dark lid I don't like too heavy of a lid anyway uh, and when I am adding in like more than two colors I'm asking myself for a bad, for a bad time. So when I'm thinking of a really good one and done, I'm thinking of a shade that adds a little bit of depth, a little bit of contrast to my eye, but not too much. Or if it is a lot, uh, it can be blended and softened really easily. I'm also looking for something uh, most of the time that adds a little bit of dimension, uh, but still is only one shadow, so not something just super flat. Um, so I'm not typically like a matte one and done shadow person. Uh, sometimes I can be, but uh, that's not what we're talking about here today. Um, and I don't think a matte one and done video would be super interesting for me because most of the ones I wear are just like a shade of, of brown. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where life takes me in terms of matte colorful single shadows on the lid. Um, but for now, that's not where I'm at. So I'm looking for a little bit of dimension, a little bit of sheen, something to give my eyeball shape without really too much balance, the eternal, the eternal search for balance. I'm sure you're all aware of the struggle. So let me show you some shadows that are both neutral. I've got some neutrals here. And I've also got a little bit of color here because just, I'm not just a neutral single shadow lady. Like, I think... There are some really good, like, colorful single shadows out there, and I want to show you those, too. So if that sounds good, let's let's go. Let's get into it. All right, first up, I'm going to start out easy, low-key, super chill, with the e.l.f. No Bud Shadow Stick in the shade Magnetic Pull. Uh, these, generally, I really like for one and done. So, like, a lot of their colors, I think, are work well for that. I think the formula specifically lends itself to one and done, and that you just draw it on. And then take, I usually take like a, something like this, so pinched, foot long, because then you can work it into the lash line, turn it, and then blend out the edge. Something like that is what I do, and it's easy, literally like a minute per eye. And then it sets down, and it's nice, and lasts all day. So this overall, good formula. What I specifically like about Magnetic Pole, you can see, twist up. Also, kudos to Elf for being the only, this one that I use the most, being the only one that's not just falling out. Um, every, every other one from Elf and otherwise, even like nice ones like Laura Mercier have fallen out, which is fine, but just I wanted to know. What's great about Magnetic Pole is that it has this really wonderful, cool toned, almost lavender color to it, so if you're interested in cool tones um, and everything kind of pulls really warm on you, try Magnetic Pull because it's it's base, it's almost gray. I really I really think it's kind of a, a lavender gray taupe. Um, and you can see what's great about these is they blend out 
really well. So they're really easy to work with. Like, they've never caused me any trouble. Uh, and this shade in particular has just the smallest hint of a sheen. Um, so it feels really sophisticated um, and elegant, especially at work. Like it's not super shiny or eye-catching, but it does add a little bit of depth, a little bit of contrast. It makes it look like I've paid attention to my eyes without doing anywhere close to too much. Um, so I put it like on my lid and a little under, blend it out, and then some highlight in the inner corner. I'm good to go. Um, and it feels, it feels elegant, it feels a little elevated, it feels like kind of an expensive color because it's so interesting and cool toned. Um, it gives, it's even cooler toned than like oyster pearl, like it's a little bit different, it's almost silver. It's in that gray area. And again, it lasts all day, all day at work, you know, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just sitting down, but it doesn't crease, it doesn't fall apart, and it's a really easy, easy go-to. So I highly recommend checking that out, it's like five bucks, uh, and it's really, it's a staple for me. So check it out if you like a cooler toned situation. Another really nice cool toned in my collection is kind of like next, like one step up in terms of vibes. Uh, this is Phytosurgeon's Oxidized Olive. Um, they have a lot of really true cool toned like not warm neutrally bronzy interesting nuanced colors over there so if you're interested in one and dones that lean a little interesting um, I think it, they're a good brand to check out uh, these are the pot cream eyeshadows um, the flash fluorescence, flash fluorescence eyeshadows they're an interesting formula they're very thin uh, in the pot, so when you touch them, they they feel hard, they feel very thin, um, not like a thick cream at all, um, and it kind of will feel like nothing's getting onto your brush or to your finger, and then only when you put it like on your eye, you're like, oh yeah, there is there is something there. So there it is, on the finger, and this is oxidized olive. It leans just just one grain of salt green away from like a traditional brownie bronze cool tone just so I'll compare it I'll put it right right next to magnetic pole and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about so it's a very bronzy neutral neutrally bronze color with just yeah like one pinch of green so here it is in the middle these, this formula, the Weathered Woods version, is not super shiny, it just has like a very subtle sheen, a little bit more than Magnetic Pull. You can see it here, and it can be built up to be really shiny. This is what I have on my eyes today. I just dipped a really, this, this horrendously dirty brush into it, swirl it around, put it on my eye, buff the edges, and that's it. So it's another super easy one for me. Um, and this is about as light as it goes, so this is a super light one layer. You can really build it up to this depth on your eyes if you pack it on. And it layers really well with itself. It builds super nicely. It's really easy to create dimension, so if you're interested in only using one shadow, but you still want to build like something darker at the lash line, something darker in the outer corner, these are really good for that the phytosurgeons ones because they do build on themselves really well and they buff out and blend really well so if you're still looking for structure these are good ones if you still are also only wanting to have one eyeshadow and these also last a really long time on me which is nice and then finally in this category of like coolie tones is this single shadow from Sydney Grace. Uh, they have a ton of shadows, I think, that I think would work very wonderfully for a variety of people as one and done, so I generally recommend them. This one I'm talking about today is Wondrous Night, which is in collaboration with Tintalia, I believe. I don't know what palette it's from. Uh, let me get you a swatch of it once I put it back into safety. So Sydney Grace tends to have a very nice metallic 
formula. Um, they're not, they don't have a ton of like super shimmery, peacey, glitzery, glamoury shades, but if you're looking for a really solid, high shine, nice metallic that blends out really smoothly and evenly, Sydney Grace is a really great, great place to look for that. So here you go, you can see Wondrous Night. It's kind of in that same vein, and this makes, you know, oxidized olive look very warm, putting it between these two. But Wondrous Night, if you turn it, has a nice, deep chocolate, almost kind of purpley color to the base, and then a really pretty bronzy, silvery sheen on it. So this is a pretty high shine and pretty dark color. Let me blend it a little so you can kind of get a feel for what it blends out to. So you can blend away the base and then it's not as dark, but it maintains that high shine, really burnished look. So this is a great one if I'm going out or looking for something a little darker, a little deeper. Wondrous Night is another staple for me because of how well it blends out. Um, so I can pack it on onto the lid or near the lash line a little darker and then blend it out still really seamlessly even though it tends it's a little deeper than my skin tone. Um, the formula lends itself to really easy blends. And sometimes with this one, or with all of these, especially um, the darker ones though, if I'm feeling like it's not blending super well into the rest of my face, I'll take some bronzer or powder blush and sweep that in, and sometimes that can help transition and look a little less stark. And I'll do that with this one sometimes, but none of these need, need that. Just something I'll do if I'm feeling like it's out of place. But yeah, these are the three lower key, cooler toned one and dones that I reach for quite a bit. Y'all, I went to wash off my hand and magnetic pull would not would not come off. Um, I tried my best, but they really, they mean what they say when they say no budge. That's, they're telling the truth there. Um, so thought I'd mention that uh, because it, it really does stay. Uh, next I want to show you some slightly warmer, more sparkly situations for when I want something sparkly, when I'm going a little warmer, maybe even a little lighter. Uh, these are the ones that I, I really quite, quite enjoy. Um, so first up, I've got Moonbeam from Shine by SD. This is from their Eternal collection, which is one of my favorite collections from them. This is a really great shade that buffs out really well, which is another thing that I really like in a one and done. Like, I don't mind using my fingers at all. But sometimes I do mind, <laughs> I do mind, just because it's another thing to clean, especially if I'm going really fast or like I'm in a rush, like in my, this, then this hand, if I've used it for a sparkle, it's out of commission. So I, the number of times I've put on an eyeshadow, forgotten, and then tried to blend my concealer, and then I'm, now I'm 10 minutes behind because I have glitter as concealer. Let me know, you know, you know. So, uh, all of these work really well with a brush, but can be like, built up with a finger if you want or need or in a or in a position to. But let's let me show you Moonbeam. So it's a really high shine, very sparkly, neutral, shiny beige. With a little, a little bit of pink, a little bit of pink to it. Let me show you. So it's kind of it's a very close to my skin tone in like tone, um, but a little bit deeper on the edge. Just you can kind of see without the light. Just that much deeper, but then super sparkly. And then as you buff it out, little pink and silver flecks really start to come out. Um, so you can pack this on and have it be a super shiny, just its own thing. Or you can really sheer it out and get all of the beautiful sparkly pinky pieciness. Uh, and what I love about this is the base of it is again not super deep so it buffs out really well but it does it covers a little bit of like my veininess my whateveriness on my eyes um, without turning muddy on them because it has just enough of that base 
to do some coverage so it's not entirely sheer. Um, but I have some shadows that I really like, like for example, this Ulta. This is not this is not one of the ten, but I'm sneaking it in. This Ulta, what is this called? Bouncy eyeshadow. It's like a weird cream. Um, they're odd. They're odd, but I I do like them in the shade Sugar Cookie Biscuit au Sucre. Um, and if you look at it, it's kind of like an Ulta version of Moonbeam, in that it has a base to it and sparkly pieces, but it's a little sheerer. And I put it right under. Um, you can barely you can barely see it, which is why it's not in here. It's like its own thing. But it's a little sh it's just enough sheerer that when I use, let's say sugar cookie instead of moonbeam, you can it turns muddy like in the presence of everything else going on on my eyelids just naturally. So what's great about moonbeam and all of these others is they do a little bit of correcting or covering of that type of stuff. Just as a point of comparison. So Moonbeam is a great one. Oh, this is also a great one to tap over literally anything else because it's so so neutral. Um, it, it doesn't fight oh, very many things, but it isn't the sheerest, so it doesn't go over everything super gracefully, but it never looks that bad. It's a great one. Highly recommend. Next up, in kind of this sparkly, light, neutral, but not is this, can I get it up? Yes, I can. It is Opulent from Fiona. This, you can kind of see, has a little bit of purple to it, but it has a nice, really warm, pretty light gold flip. So it doesn't, it flips between like warm and cool, which makes it neutral, right? Um, it goes in between the two. So here we have a swatch on the finger. You can see the cool purple base, but then that nice yellow gold flip. Um, and this is more shiny than PC. You can kind of see the difference. Like this is just has a really beautiful flippy shine instead of PC sparkle. Um, you can see that sheer pink base with the white nice light flip. And this is where you're getting into a little bit more color, right? Like it's not just a neutral, it's something interesting. But that base, again, gives the coverage, the shine gives the dimension, but it's also something a little interesting. I think especially going into spring, this will be really, really nice. If you already have this, try it just on its own. Because I do think, especially as you buff it out, like that base comes out as the sparkle kind of fades away. And you can really get a lot of, again, dimension with this without working too hard. And again, it's kind of an interesting color, so it's not just nothing. So I get a lot of payoff, a lot of interest, something really shiny and sparkly without having to do like anything, which is great. Uh, and a lot of Cleona shades are like that for me, which is why I quite like them. All right, next up I want to show you some colorful single shadows that I think kind of hold their own. Uh, on the lid, at least for me, uh, and where I'm at skin tone wise. Um, and that's really, it's kind of a hard thing to find at least for me because the ease and like low keyness of a lot of one and done shadows comes from the fact that they're, they're neutral and they sit on my skin in a way that isn't, isn't far away from what was already happening. They just kind of turn up the volume in one direction or the other. And so when you're looking at colorful shadows that can be by themselves. It can be a little trickier, at least for me, because what do they blend into if it's like a hot a hot pink or something? Um, and if you're up against that, uh, there's obviously using like bronzer or blush or both or even your setting powder, powder to go into the look, create some some colors that are also somewhere else on your face and your eyes can really help make it feel more at home. Um, but these shadows I'm going to show you are all shadows that I feel totally comfortable wearing just by themselves. Uh, and I'll explain kind of why as we get to them. But uh, that's that's kind of hard. The hard part of finding, you know, a one and done that isn't just like a neutral. Um, and there's nothing wrong with neutrals. I love a neutral, but I also like a fun color. Um, so the first up, this is 
The Milky Way by Sydney Grace. This is also from the collab they did with Tim Talia. That was full of good colors. Um, good colors. So, here we have it on the finger. And they don't do a ton of shifty, sparkly, super glittery out there shades usually. Like, sometimes, you know, they have every once in a while, they, they do something a little, a little crazy for Sydney Grace. But, um, uh, I don't think of them as, like, that type of eyeshadow brand. Um, I do think of them as, like, the most amazing staples and really nuanced neutrals and high shine metallics. Like, if that's what you're... Sydney Grace is great for that. Um, but occasionally, yeah, they'll throw something out there that I'm like, you're trying... you're doing something a little different, and I like it. And this is one of those. So you can see it has kind of a very warm pink base with a bluey-yellow shine to it, flip to it, and it really does something great on, at least for me, the eyes. So you can see the base here. It's that warm, warm pinky maroon. So not too crazy, like a little pink, but um, you know, I'm pink, I'm, I'm pink. But then that blue flip really does something interesting and adds a little bit of, a little bit of intrigue, you know? A little bit of something special and that's what I like about this type of one and done and that it goes on and it's immediately interesting like you don't have to worry about layering colors or adding a bunch of different things to garner like visual interest um, these shifty shades will kind of do that just do the work for you um, and that's what that's what also makes using these as one and dones super nice and almost I prefer that over building a look around them is that you don't have to worry about like what they blend into or how they look at a different angle if you're only using that color because that's just what's there. So there's nothing for it to look bad with. That's also what I love about one and done. So it's just it's gonna look like how it looks. No math. Um, not that math is bad, but these type of shadows like do do the math for you. You can see it. And it does stay super shiny, but it's not super glittery. So if you're looking for something that has a flip, an interesting color, you know, situation to it without going too sparkly, glittery, shiny, the Sydney Grace duochromes and multichromes are great for that. They're like wearable, subtle, work appropriate ones. And this is a, a really nice, interesting one. So kind of next to that in color, um, we're getting into back into the not powder shadow. So this is a liquid shadow from REM Beauty. And I'm usually not, liquid shadows are hard. I think we all know that. Um, but this one is sheer enough that if you do it right, it's done. You're good. Um, so this is the shade Fembot. And it's one of those like bluey browny shades, um, but it's got a really nice purpleness to it. Um, I do find it, it's not the trickiest to use, but you gotta, for me personally, I have to swipe this on and just leave it, and that's what it is, and maybe blend out the edges a little with a brush, but I can't touch the main thing. But do you see how shiny that is? Um, and see, it has a, a that kind of almost space cowboy -y base, right, where it's like a little orange, but then it has a really super shiny blue purple flip to it um, and what makes this work as such a colorful one and done is the sheerness uh, and that little bit of like neutral base because as you blend it out the shine kind of disperses into just general sparkle with that neutral base so it kind of creates its own transition and then when you've put it on the most heavily it has that really really shiny almost wet looking kind of magical blue-purple vibe to it. So this is, if you can get it to work for you, and it's really not that, I'm making it sound like it's gonna fight you, um, you just have to be comfortable not fussing with it, which I guess is in the spirit of one and done. It's like, it's on and it's done. But it really creates a super dimensional, shiny, wet-looking lid with very little, very little work. And whenever I wear this, I, I usually I get asked, like, what are you doing on your eyes? Um, which is always kind of, you know, a nice feeling. But I find it 
it lasts all day. It doesn't crease too horribly on me, um, especially if I have like a primer under it, which can, you know, with liquid shadows, I guess it's always up for discussion whether or not a primer is useful. But for me, I found it to be useful for this one. See, look how shiny. Makes the Sydney Grace one look like it's not even doing anything. Yeah, that's a great one if you're if you're into the liquid eyeshadow game. This is also great as like an inner corner highlight. You just dab it there. Done. Easy. Voila. Alright, my last two are gonna be also colorful but kind of in a different in a different direction. Um, first I've got corrosion from Cleona. And again, most of a lot of Cleona shades like are gonna if, if they're your vibe, then they're gonna fit into this category. But Corrosion is one of my favorites in the sense that it falls into one of my favorite categories, which is warm based green shinies. And maybe I'll do a video one day that shows like all of these because it's honestly embarrassing. Because uh, <laughs> you only need one, and that's not how many I have. Um, but you can see, I think we've all seen something like this color, um, and it's just, you know, what what version of it are you working with? But it has that warm red base, which again is what makes it something a little more wearable because the base of it is is almost skin adjacent, right? Like there's red in skin, just like there's I don't know that th this is me going a little far saying that's in my skin, but there's like this in my skin. There's some red somewhere, right? And then that bright flash of green is what makes it interesting. And as you blend it out, you know, the the base disperses a little bit a little bit, lightens up, the sparkles disperse a little bit. So it blends out and transitions out in a really easy to manage way, um, without getting too dark, which again, is the whole point of what we've got going on here. So if you're interested in something green or something bright or almost gold because it reads as gold in some lights which keeps it neutral which keeps it you know a little easier to wear than something else but that flip and that shine help give your eye dimension uh, in certain lights again without trying too hard and again you don't have there are, there are plenty of all of these out there um, you know what what brand you go with is kind of up to your discretion, uh, but the cleaner ones are are very nice and very sparkly. Alright, so the final one I have is another one of those red, greeny, gold. So if you liked the vibe of Corrosion, but you didn't necessarily want to like deal with the whole indie-ness of it all, um, I also have, and I'll explain this, but this is the uh, Dedes Myricks Color Fix Foil in the shade Jewels, um, and these are great. I love this. I've done something to ma maintain its usability, but I will say these get clogged in here, and at one point when I was trying to squeeze it out, it squeezed out like the other end. Um, so now I keep it clippied, and I make sure to clean out the tube every time I use it. So just word of warning about these as a product, they do that. But they're also beautiful. Um, so these are a liquid shadow. That was way too much. I mean, you only need a tiny bit. All right, let me go. Up. Let me go wipe some of this off. We don't need that much. All right, back with a reasonable amount. It's still even a lot on my hand, but um, you can see here it is. It's very similar to corrosion in the sense that it's like green gold, but it's more of a vibrant neon green with a sheerer base. So if you're interested in something a little sheerer and a little more neon, there you go. And again, that sheerness is what makes it so easy to just tap on. Um, so some, I will usually put some on my hand. Again, it has a tendency to like be really messy, which is why, you know, I'm, I love it. It's one of my favorites. It's definitely a top 10, but I have to. You have to go in knowing what's what's going to happen. But I usually put some on the back of my hand, dip my finger in it, and then tap 
the sparkles on and it leaves just like this very shiny vibrant green just sparkle with that hint of red that gives it that change in the light that makes it feel like more than just one thing it's really really beautiful but it is kind of finicky but there is that green gold out there um, available if you're if you're looking for it all right and those are some of my top 10 favorite one and done shadows did any of them look particularly interesting to you do you have any favorites please let me know um, thank you for taking the time to listen to me share this with you and I'll see you in the next one.